Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this one I'll show you how to make these irresistible chicken balti pies. These pies are a staple favourite in our football stadiums all around the UK. And they are so easy to make. If you like your curry and like your pies, these are ideal for you. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. OK, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, I'll start by making the hot water crust pastry. Add the water to a small saucepan and bring it to a slow simmer. Add the butter and the lard to the simmering water and allow it to melt. And while that's melting, add the salt and the garam masala to the flour and mix it in. The garam masala gives this pastry a fantastic flavour. Once it's mixed in, form a well in the middle of the flour. Soon as it's melted, add the liquid to the flour. And with my trusty wooden spoon handle, I'll bring it all together. Now scrape down the sides of your bowl with your bowl scraper. Turn it out onto the bench. It should now be cool enough to handle, but always check first. Now gently fold it all together. It's actually quite a pleasant feeling folding this warm pastry. Now cut the pastry into two pieces, one large one for the base of the pies and one small for the lids. Approximately two thirds and one third. Wrap the pastry in cling film or put it in plastic food bags and refrigerate for at least one hour before using it. And FYI, without the garam masala, this is the exact pastry used to make our British pork pies. And I do have a two-parter on how to make those. I'll leave a link in the description box. Now on to making this delicious Balti curry filling. And I'll start by putting the salt and all of the spices together. To a small bowl add the salt. The first ingredient is half a teaspoon of dried fenugreek leaves, also known as kasuri methi. Next is half a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Now one to half a teaspoon of hot or mild chilli powder and that's up to you how spicy you want yours to taste. And the last ingredient is one teaspoon of garam masala. And that's it, the five ingredients needed to flavour this Balti curry. Now set that aside for now. OK, it's time to prep the ingredients for the Balti curry. And I'll start by dicing the 300 grams of chicken fillets. Finely chop your coriander leaves. Next, dice your medium sized onion. Now onto your fresh ginger and your garlic. Now you can chop these both together pretty small. Now I'll top up these six small bird's eye chilies. And the last thing to prep is these beautiful little vine tomatoes. And you need to chop these pretty small. And here's a quick recap of what we've got so far. We have the diced chicken and the diced onions, the chopped garlic and ginger, the 150 mils of chicken stock, 
or you can just use water. What I'm using is just half of a chicken stock cube. Our little chopped chilies, the fresh tomatoes, the mixed spices, the fresh coriander, and you'll also need two teaspoons of fresh double or heavy cream. And now on to putting this delicious balti pie filling together. In a medium sized frying pan or curry pan if you have one, add the four tablespoons of oil and get it hot. Start by frying your onions until they're translucent and just starting to colour. Now add your garlic and ginger and stir fry that for a further minute. Next, add your fresh chopped tomatoes and stir those in. Time to add the diced chicken to the pan. Stir fry that for a moment too. Now add the spices we mixed earlier and give those a good mix until everything is combined and this is where you start to smell that beautiful curry aroma. And now you can throw in those little bird's eye chopped chilies. These little chilies add a bit more colour, flavour and warmth to the dish. Once everything is combined add the 150 ml of chicken stock or water. Like I said earlier, I simply use half a chicken stock cube in mine. Now bring that to a slow simmer and let it reduce for 5 minutes. And as it reduces, it will thicken slightly. Almost done. Add your 2 teaspoons of double, or you may know it as heavy whipping cream, and gently stir that in. And this will also allow the sauce to thicken a little. Finally, add your chopped coriander and stir that in too. And that's it. Your delicious chicken balti pie filling is done. Now turn off the heat and allow it to cool. While that's cooling, I can start rolling and cutting the pastry. And these are the little pie tins I'll be using. They're an ideal size for us. Obviously you can use whatever size pie tins you have. You'll also need to grease the tins with lard, butter or shortening. Now take your pastry out of the fridge and just manipulate it for a while, just to get it loose and softened up a bit. Now on a floured surface, start to roll the larger of the pastries out for the bases of the pies. Quite a few of you have mentioned in the comments that you're having problems rolling out your pastry evenly. Well this rolling pin may be the answer to that. It works great. It has different size spaces on the ends. Now I'm going to use the 3mm or 1 8 spacer attached to mine. I'll leave my Amazon UK affiliate links for the pie tins and the roller in the description box below the video. Once you've rolled it out, you'll need something a little larger than the pie tin to cut out the bases for the pie tins that you're using. Now roll out the pastry for the lids, and the ideal size for the lids is the actual pie tin that you're using. For 
the egg wash, crack a small egg into a suitable container and add a dash of milk and whisk thoroughly until it's nice and smooth and runny. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 340 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 3. Ok, time to put these beauties together. I'll show you how to do one from start to finish. Place one of the base pastries over the top of your greased tin, making sure it's centralised. Now gently press it down all the way to the bottom corners. Make sure you don't have any air pockets in the bottom. And for those girls and guys who have long fashionable nails, use a little piece of folded pastry to push it right down into the corners where the base meets the sides of the tin. Now make sure you have a lip of pastry all around the edge of the tin. Right, time to fill it. I've transferred my filling to a dish to make it easier to film, but you can just use the pan you cooked it in. Fill the pie case to just below the top of the pastry. Don't overfill because it'll only expand and burst out when it's baking. You've got to leave some room for that expansion. Before putting the lid on, give the tin a few taps on the bench. This will get shot of any trapped air in the filling. Now lightly brush egg wash all around the lip. Place the lid on the top and gently press it down all around the edge. Now using your four fingers and thumbs, crimp all the way around the edge as shown. This creates a good tight seal. Cut a couple of vent slits in the middle of the pie. Now brush your egg wash all over the pie lid, making sure you don't get any between the pastry and the tin, because that could make the finished pie stick as it bakes in the oven. Make sure your vents are clear of egg wash and that's it, it's ready for the oven. Now I'll get it onto the baking tray with the other three. The final touch I like to do is to sprinkle a few large crystals of coarse sea salt over the tops, but be very sparing with this. These perforated pizza trays allow more heat to get to the bottom of the pie, that's my theory anyway. Now I'll get them into my preheated oven and set the timer for 40 minutes. And while those are baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my three recipe books a quick shout out. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. All three books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. Ok, these gorgeous pies are done and they look amazing. And I wish you could smell my kitchen at the moment. Right, I'll get them onto a wire rack, but I'll leave them in the pie tins for the first five minutes as the pastry is delicate when it first comes out of the oven. So, when I come back, I'll show you what they're like on the inside and of course, have a little taste. Right, it's actually been about 10 minutes since they came out of the oven. And with the tin being well greased, these should pop straight out. The bottom is well cooked, always a good sign. Time to cut one open. And as you can see, it's still piping hot. And oh my goodness, the aroma is out of this world. 
Out of all the thousands of pies I've made over the years, this has got to be one of the tastiest and easiest to make. It's an absolutely fabulous pie. It tastes so good. And this has got to be the best way to serve them, with chips, stroke fries and a little side salad. And of course a pint of cold lager. Alcohol free in my case. Pure heaven. I should have given this one two thumbs up guys. Seriously, you've got to try this one. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Novi, Lestari, Jawaladin, Lisa Bobden, Margaret Hughes, Stephanie Nipfer, Randy Smith, John Ulmer, Chloe Elliott, Phil Morrissey, Julie Morton, Jacob Jansen, Kate Bartolome, Steve Berger, Denise Anderson. And there's also two who wish to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.